Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be covering the current meta for basically all solo activities in Albion. So in this video we're going to cover corrupted dungeons, solo dungeons, soloing group PVM like group dungeons and static dungeons, solo ganking, solo open world roaming, and solo open world mob farming. So starting us off with Corrupted Dungeons, Corrupted Dungeon meta actually has a pretty good variety of weapons in the meta right now. It's very diverse. Not so much for armors, but it's still pretty good. Really a lot of the meta builds sort of share the same types of armor and then just use different weapons along with that. So for the meta armor setup, on your helmet it's usually cloth where you get the option to switch between the bop ability on all cloth helmets and the individual cowl's special abilities. So common cloth helmets that you'll see are things like fiend cowls for the purge, mage cowl for extra damage on low damage builds, or cultist cowl for the sort of same thing, and then cleric cowl. For chest pieces, it's pretty much always leather chests on meta builds, minus a few specific ones. And for the leather chests, it's almost always either mercenary jackets if your build can use it well, otherwise assassin jacket for that general good defensive. On the shoe slot, it is plate shoes with rejuvenating sprint to get that HP and sometimes switching to the special ability on things like guardian boots for the extra tankiness, soldier boots for that great mobility, or knight boots for the shield. Really though, it seems like in the meta for most matchups, people are just staying on rejuvenating sprint to get that extra HP. So with this sort of armor setup of a cloth helmet, leather chest, plate, shoes, there are a lot of different weapons that are used, a lot of different ones in the meta that have success. Just to note some ones that are either pretty highly ranked or pretty common, we have the Fists of Avalon, Broadsword, Bow of Badon, Warbow, Claymore, and Holy Staffs like the Hallowfall and One-Handed Holy. For the rest of the build in like the cape food and potions it's very sort of build slash weapon specific for the cape fatford capes are probably the most common and for potions usually good players bring both healing potions and resistance potions and swap between them depending on the matchup and then lastly for food it's really all over the place it really depends on the person's personal playstyle and weapon that they're using I will also note here that there are some pretty common popular builds, especially in Stalker Up to Dungeons, that don't really follow this same cloth helmet leather chest plate shoe meta, like the Trinity Spear build. If you want to check some of these out and learn more about different sort of corrupted dungeon builds that aren't this like specific meta, head over to murderledger.com or I'll link a video where I cover murderledger.com in the video and you can see all about corrupted dungeons, what people are using and what's doing well, sort of things like that. It's really a great resource if you want to learn about corrupted dungeons. Moving on to solo dungeons, the fastest clearing weapon is currently in the one-handed nature staff, closely followed by things like the light crossbow. So along with the one-handed nature staff for the fastest clearing build, we have the cultist cowl, druid robe, and then any leather shoes for a crushing sprint, along with the crypt candle for your offhand, that for cape for more damage on your cape, poison potions for more damage, and then any regeneration food, ideally Avalonian beef stews or else any soups or fish. For abilities and passives, it's thorns on your Q, bramble seed on your W, and then energetic on your passive. For your cultist cowl special ability, same as a druid robe, and refreshing sprint on your shoes, with either balance mind on the leather and aggression on all cloth. For soloing group PvE like static dungeons and group dungeons, again the nature staffs reign supreme, this time though we have the druidic staff and the great nature staffs as the current best weapons. For the rest of the build, the specter hood is your best helmet along with the hellion jacket or mercenary jacket for your chest piece depending if you want to do large groups or singular mobs like bosses, and then shoes of tenacity for your boots or mercenary shoes for a budget option. And then if you are using the druidic staff, you get an offhand option as well and you'll use the normal torch for this. 
For cape, food, and potions, you want to go with the demon cape for more damage. For your food, pork roasts, as they help with that lifesteal, helping you stay healthy as you clear. It's a very essential part of the clear. And then lastly, potions, invisibility potions for more defensiveness, or poison potions for more damage and faster clears. For abilities on your nature staff, obviously thorns is going to be your Q option. For the W, you're going to switch between revitalize and protection of nature, depending on how big your pull is. And then for passive energetic, to make sure you keep up that energy. And for your armor, it's all the special abilities along with the balanced mind passives. Just a quick note on soloing group PvE like this, other classic weapons like the Shadow Caller still work very well. They're just slightly outclassed by the new nature staffs and you can just use the exact same build with these. For solo ganking, due to all the ganking nerfs, the solo ganking meta has been quite stale for a while now. It is still just invisibility potion meta. Basically, the best way to catch people is to catch them before they can get mounted up, as dismounting people is quite difficult, and so you pop invisibility potions off their screen and then come onto their screen and tag them before they can mount up. That's pretty much the only way to reliably catch people nowadays as a solo ganker. However, due to this meta still being alive, that also means that weapon diversity is still great. You can pretty much use any weapon that has CC or damage, and it can be successful. However, some of the best weapons you will see in the current meta are probably Battle Bracers, Bear Paws, and the One-Handed Spear. For the armor, on your chest piece, you're usually going to see people go cleric robes for a little bit fighting ability and damage, or else assassin jackets that have a little bit more versatility in that invisibility. For boots, it's pretty much always either soldier boots, which gives you that great wanderlust ability, leather shoes with refreshing sprint that gives you faster cooldown rotations, or royal sandals for more damage. For helmets, it's pretty much always fiend cows as purge is pretty much necessary for solo ganking. Looking at your cape, food, and potions. For the cape, usually people either go undead if they want to be a little bit safer, or fat furred for damage, and then also some builds go limphurst cape if they're really energy hungry. For food, it really depends on the weapon. It's usually either omelets for faster cooldowns or beef stews for higher damage. And obviously for potions, invisibility potions like we talked about before. A pretty decent activity that's been getting probably a little bit more popular recently is solo open world roaming. Not really looking for anything specific, rather just going off objectives that randomly spawn. So for example, you'll see a lot of streamers do this if you watch Twitch streamers. Really for this, since you're kind of going out not with a specific purpose, there is no real meta builds. There's a ton of different play styles and builds that you can go with. It's way more personalized than even solo ganking because it really depends what you're going out looking for. So I can't really give you a meta build. It's more what you're looking to do. One absolute classic build for this that's been meta for a very long time though is the Bloodletter Rat build where you go around and steal kills from people that are fighting or steal some chests and then run away. Really, it's just a high mobility, high burst damage build that you can sort of do whatever with. So for this build, you wanna go with the Bloodletter and the Muizak as your offhand, along with the Mage Cow on your helmet for more damage, Cleric Robe again for more damage, and then Minor Rook Boots are the best escaping boots, along with the Thetford Cape, Beef Stews, and Poison Potions. For abilities on the blood ladder, it's Deadly Swipe and Chain Slash with the Deep Cuts passive. And then for all of your armor, it's Damage Passives wherever possible with all the special abilities. Looking at open world mob farming as a solo player, the current fastest build comes in the Spiked Gauntlets where you just try to basically one shot mobs either with your E or your QW combo. For this build, the core is in your spiked gauntlets as your weapon, cultist robe as your chest piece, and then Thetford cape as your cape, and then for your boots and helmet you have a little bit more options. So for your helmet, guardian helmet is a great option that helps you be a little bit safer as you can get that shield before you mount up to help sort of mount up if someone comes to attack you, or else if you need a little more help with bosses and things like that, you can go something like the mage cowl or the cultist cowl. And for boots, really anything works, you don't use them all that much. Mercenary shoes are never a bad option to help instantly drop mob aggro if you need to, or else something like guardian boots can help with boss fights, 
or something like demon boots or soldier boots to help you escape faster. For potions, it's pretty much poison potions just to help with bosses, or you can also take invisibility potions with you to help escape from gankers just a little bit better. And for food, it's either beef stews or pork omelets, depending on if you can one-shot mobs or not with your combos. For abilities on your gloves, it's Dragon Leap on the Q with Triple Kick on the W and Fatal Fury on your passive. And for your armor, Levitate on your Cultist Rope along with the Aggression passive. And then for your boots and helmet, depending on what you go, you're usually going to want either any damage passives are always good or cooldown passives otherwise. And then for any plate, just Toughness defensive passive along with whatever ability you're using. Okay, that is all of the current top meta builds for Solo, Play, and Albion. I hope this video helped you out and you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Right in the